Robert Gilman co-founded the Global Eco-Village Movement back in about 1990-1991. And in a book called Eco-Villages and Sustainable Communities, uh, his definition came out, which I love, and it goes like this. Human scale, full featured settlement, in which human activities are harmlessly integrated into the natural world with multiple centers of initiative in a way that supports healthy human development and can be successfully continued into the indefinite future. This is Peak Moment. We are living at a peak of human innovation, information, wealth, and health. But we're also at a peak of population and consumption, with rising temperatures and declining resources fueled by cheap oil and gas. Peak Moment Television, bringing you examples of positive responses to energy decline and climate change through local community action. Hi, welcome to Peak Moment. I'm Junea Donaldson. I'm at Southside Park co-housing in the middle of downtown Sacramento, an intentional community that's a perfect site for this guest. My guest is Diana Leaf Christian. Thanks for joining me. It's a pleasure. Diana, you were the editor of Communities Magazine for 14 years, so I would expect you to know a bunch about intentional communities, eco-villages, co-housing, all the flavors. But you've also authored a couple books. Tell us what they are. Creating a Life Together, uh, my first book, Creating a Life Together, Practical Tools to Grow Eco-Villages and Intentional Communities. It's a how-to book to get them started. Um, what works, what doesn't work, how not to reinvent the wheel. And Finding Community, how to join an eco-village or intentional community, which is the other side of the coin. Mm -hmm. How does a person who wants to live in community research them online, visit them effectively, evaluate their visits, and join gracefully? Oh, that's nice. I like that, gracefully. That's, a, that's probably a very important part of it. Well, it can be difficult to join, or it can be easy, and so I'd like to help people know what might help them. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to square one. What is an eco-village? Well, I have a new newsletter online, a free newsletter called okay. Eco-Villages, because I'm a student of and an advocate for this particular kind of intentional community. So the overarching umbrella term would be intentional communities, and within that there are various kinds. One kind is an eco-village. So an eco-village is a human settlement where people live out their ecological values to the best degree they can. They, they want to have ecological sustainability. Mm -hmm. And why are they doing this? Mm -hmm. you've, you've heard the expression, put your money where your mouth is. Yes, yes. This is put your lifestyle where your values are. Oh, so you value this and this and this way of life. Could you live that way with other like-minded people doing the same thing? And also be a model demonstration site so that you can have tours and workshops and other people coming to learn from what you're learning. So you're learning and you're teaching. So that's interesting to have not just doing it, not just, say, living with a low energy footprint or mm -hmm. sharing things, yeah. but also to be a model and thus t teaching other people how to live similarly or think similarly? Yes, well, and or to just inspire them to consider some options and perhaps question the high consumption way of life that most Americans and people around the Western world have. Further, regarding eco-villages, um, if it's a rural eco-village, people need to make a living so that they have an income not only for themselves but for any annual community dues and fees. So there needs to be economic sustainability. So not just ecological but also economic. How are people making a living? What are they doing to make a living? Um, how does the community bring in income? All of that together is part of the uh, eco economic sustainability. Thirdly, we need what you might call cultural, social, cultural, spiritual sustainability. And what that is, is how do we get along here? Are we enjoying ourselves? Mm -hmm. What kind of self-governance have we created for ourselves? Do we have processes to resolve conflicts? Do we have a rich and active social life, cultural life? Is our spiritual life here, our, our social life, our cultural life? So the way I see it, we start eco-villages to live out our ecological values and to create ecological sustainability. And we can maintain them and keep them going if we're rural, if we've got economic sustainability, okay. which itself 
is very important in terms of sustainability. And we continue to live there and thrive and enjoy it if we've got social, cultural, and spiritual sustainability, which we create as a group together. When, when an eco-village, it would seem to me that people want to live in an eco-village because it's going to be different and hopefully more rich than, than ordinary life, whatever that is. And why do people come and form eco-villages, live there? Well, I think because it's a chance to live out their values and a chance to have more community in their life, more connection, a feeling of more camaraderie and neighborliness. It feels good. It's also very challenging. Both are true at the same time. It feels good and it's challenging and it feels good. And also, I think, because there's more meaning to one's life if you feel that you might be making a bit of a difference. You have things you want to make. You want the world to be a better and different place, mm. most likely. Mm. Or, or I mean, at least many do, or at least people watching Peak Moment TV probably do. And so what can you do on a daily basis in the way that you live to to live the way you would like to suggest that others do and be a demonstration site. Where I live at Earth Haven Eco Village in North Carolina, we have weekly tours on every Saturday morning and then private tours throughout the week for people who come on weekdays. And we have classes and workshops and we're very aware that we're poised between our role as learners and our role as mm. teachers, inspirers, encouragers to the degree that we can. I would imagine that actually doing those tours and educational things are going to push your edges to, to be learning in an accelerated way because what you're in that in a teacher's role you find what you don't know, you find mm -hmm. where your weaknesses are and you yeah. that it draws attention to that. Yeah. I'm going to go back for a second. You're at e you live at Earth Haven Eco Village, North Carolina. That's right. So tell us a little bit what that's like. How many people live there? How many sure. buildings? You know, sure, describe. I'd be happy to. And at some point, I'd love to tell you my favorite definition of an eco village, which comes from Robert Gilman in Might 1991. Might as well do it now. Oh, okay. Then I'll go to Earth Haven. Well, Robert Gilman co-founded the global eco village movement with several other folks internationally back in about 1990, 1991. And in a book called Eco Villages and Sustainable Communities, uh, his definition came out, which I love, and it goes like this. Human scale, full featured settlement, in which human activities are harmlessly integrated into the natural world with multiple centers of initiative in a way that supports healthy human development and can be successfully continued into the indefinite future. So I'd like to tell you what each one of those means, if I may. Mm. Okay. Mm. Um, Full-featured settlement means whether there's just a few people or a lot of people, we know each other's names, we know each other's faces. We recognize each other when we see each other, we know who that person is. And when we are in a meeting together, we can feel the influence of our voice and our viewpoint on the outcome of the decision. We co-create our governance together. Human scale. Full-featured settlement means we live here, we work here, our jobs are here, we earn incomes here. Our social life is here, our spiritual life is here. We might be raising and growing food here. We might be purchasing needed goods and services here. We can certainly leave our property any time, but we don't really have to because most we, of those most of what we need is here. Uh -huh, now that's uh -huh. what full featured means, but I have to say there are probably only three eco village projects in the world that are full featured. I was going to ask because that's that's a lot of richness yes. you've got to de develop. So there. you need to be old and <laughs> large and well developed as an eco village. Mm -hmm. So Dom and her in Italy, Findhorn in Scotland, and Oroville in India probably best approximate that part of the definition. So the definition is more of an affirmation mm -hmm. than a definition because most eco-villages that I know, don't they're not full-featured. And the other parts of the definition, they're aspiring to that, but they're not yes. that yet. Yes. So this definition is kind of a, about eco-villages that are... a vision mm -hmm. in a way. Where are we going? Yes. And so I'd say that the eco-villages that I'm aware of are aspiring eco-villages. Now you mentioned Italy, Oroville in India, and, uh, and Scotland. And Scotland. So that tells us the eco village is really worldwide. Oh, it so is. Tell and us after about I that. finish this definition, why don't I tell you about that? 
All right. And then, and we then can we'll go, go to, to yours. Earth Haven. Sure, sure. Okay. Um, human scale. Uh, human activities harmlessly integrated into the natural mm -hmm. world means mm -hmm. that uh, what we're doing in how we live in our house and how we make a living and getting around the land and transporting ourselves to the nearby town or city and how we generate our power and deal with our waste and so on. We're trying to do it in a way that harms the earth the least. We want the least amount of harm for what we're doing here on this planet. Now, it's not harmless because we're still aspiring. It's just as harmless as we can make it given our resources of time and knowledge and skill and money and labor. So we're doing the best we can in eco-villages, but someone could say, hey, you're still harmful, and we'd say, yes, we're not quite there yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. With multiple centers of initiative means the original intentional community is not the sole decider and initiator of projects. It doesn't initiate, fund, and manage all the products, oh. projects that go on. Oh. Uh, members, groups of members can form co-ops or businesses or nonprofit organizations to bring about something. Mm -hmm. Neighbors can do the same, or groups of members and neighbors together. So at Findhorn Eco Village in Scotland, for example, there is a store, the Phoenix Store. It's owned by groups of members and neighbors. Um, and all of them together are in the Findhorn Association, but only some of them are in the Findhorn Intentional Community. The wind generators is a co-op, the woodlot co-op, the dairy mm. co-op, the CSA farm co-op are projects initiated by members and groups of members and neighbors, not initiated by the intentional community itself. So, multiple centers of initiative means you have more resilience in a kind of a long-term evolutionary sense. A project that fails does not bring down the whole enterprise. A project that mm. succeeds can succeed and thrive, and the community people can't say, stop, you're going too fast, we don't want to do that so fast, because they're an individual project they could go. Okay. So entrepreneurs can thrive if they've, they're given the freedom to do so. And you need entrepreneurs and communities so that you can have jobs in rural areas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Supports healthy human development means we're not just growing produce and growing food in greenhouses and growing power in our photovoltaic panels, but we're growing human beings. Mm. We're learning how to get along well. We're learning how to solve problems, do cooperative decision making, share resources, resolve issues that come up. We're learning how to do on a small scale what we wish the whole world would do in terms of resolving conflicts. So we're growing ourselves as human beings. And lastly, wait, there's one more. Go ahead. Can successfully be continued into the indefinite future means that we're teaching our children and we hope they'll teach their children and all down the generations and we hope they'll do it better than we did. So that's mm. my favorite definition of eco-villages. It's, it's all encompassing. I, I really like that because if you're going to continue it indefinitely into the future, you're going to have to lighten that footprint and, 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 and evolve. Yeah, yeah. So you asked about how worldwide is the phenomenon. Um, when I go online and look at where eco-villages are, it's more than 70 countries. Many of them, especially in the industrialized north, are intentional communities. Um, many of them in the global south, but also parts of Eastern Europe and Spain, are traditional villages which have become more ecologically self-aware and want to return to a better environmental situation because they want to restore the earth where they are because it's been degraded by the influence of the industrial north. And they want to restore their traditional culture and they want to make sure that their way of getting food and water and shelter and what they need is not compromised by a globalized economy so that through, through earning money or through trade or barter or their traditional ways of creating wealth food, shelter, clothing, food, water. In the village, they're doing fine. So in Sri Lanka, in Ladakh, and in Africa are traditional villages that are also eco-villages. Uh, there are three regions in the world that the Global Eco-Village Network, GIN for short, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. works with. Uh, GIN, Europe, Africa, which is all of Europe, in the Middle East and Africa. The most active uh, eco-village 
regional organization. Mm -hmm. The other ones are in a eco-village network of the Americas, South, Central, and North America. Okay. Okay. And Genoa, which is uh, Gen Oceania, Asia. So, uh, it's a worldwide phenomenon and it's very exciting for me personally to be connected with friends and colleagues in other parts of the world. So in my newsletter I always have stories from other continents mm. as well as stories about eco-village projects in North America. Is it as strong in, in North America? What's, what, where Do we have no, any here? We have some in North America, but it's a much more potent and exciting phenomenon in Europe. Now, I'm not sure why that is, but I suspect it's because land prices, property prices relative to people's income, and the fact that Europe has more, I'd say, political will, more awareness of larger amounts of the population about environmental and political issues mm -hmm. than in North America, where t people, I think, tend to be more numbed out in front of the tube or complacent relative to our compadres in Europe, I, th I think. Anyway, there's Dancing Rabbit and Earth Haven, where I live. Dancing Rabbit is in northeastern Missouri. Both are large rural eco-villages, Dancing Rabbit in the prairie, Earth Haven in the mountains with the forest, both building eco-villages from scratch. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. eco-village at Ithaca in upstate New York, which is semi-rural or maybe even suburban, although they're on a beautiful 175-acre parcel. And they have two clustered co-housing communities of 30 units each, like Southside Park co-housing here, only 30 units, clustered near to each other, and they're right now building their third clustered mm -hmm. co-housing neighborhood right on that same property. These have bank loans and architects and contractors and mm -hmm. look lovely and look like a normal subdivision, although it's very green in, a, in an ecological sense. And you could take your grandmother there and she wouldn't think it's strange. And the eco-village at Ithaca has had enormous amounts of worldwide media attention because it's so beautiful and so accessible. You watching the television, looking at eco-village at Ithaca could say, well, I could live there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Los mm -hmm. Angeles eco-village is a urban eco-village created right where the founders lived in a neighborhood three miles from downtown LA. A working class Korean immigrant and Hispanic immigrant neighborhood wow. where people wow. live in two adjacent apartment buildings and they're renters. They hope to turn these buildings into limited equity housing co-ops so that they can own what they're nice, doing there. Nice. And uh, they're public transportation and bicycle activists and doing the whole urban thing. So, worldwide. Got the flavors in, in all the places, in here, cities, I mean, all, I, that's, that's really exciting. I asked you what it's like to live at Earth Haven. I also want to know sort of what those forward edges are. We've, we've got nine minutes left. What the forward edges are in the eco-village movement, since you're keeping track of that. Okay, what it's like to live at Earth Haven, is to li which is in the mountains, in the forest, mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the southern Appalachians, the Blue Ridge Mountains. So in the summer, you would be walking on footpaths and gravel roads under dappled sunlight. You'd be hearing birdsong. You'd be hearing the sound of babbling brooks. And sometimes you'd hear the sound of a chainsaw or a skill saw, which is felling trees to make more sunlight for gardens and passive solar homes and sunlight to fall on uh, photovoltaic panels because we're entirely off the grid. And you'd hear skill saws because people are building homes. And uh, we say that's the sound of freedom because we're doing it ourselves. No bank loans, oh. um, no architects and contractors. It's basically homegrown finance, homegrown construction. We have businesses on site. One is a business that is owned by two members building off-grid homes with off-grid power. Mm. Um, wow. There are 13 neighborhoods, 45 people. We hope to be 160 someday as we get as big as we're going to get. Um, various people work on site with different income streams, telecommuting, working for another member, providing goods and services. Different ones of us both employ each other and work for each other, mm -hmm. all circulating money and our own local currency, which we call LEAPS, as um, part of the village-scale economy that we're creating. Socially, it feels like we're in a 
a big network of brothers and sisters and cousins, people that we know well and that we feel related to and we look out for. Just like in co-housing here at Southside Park, they do that too. People of all ages? Oh yes, Families it's Families and elders and Oh so yes, on. it's multi-generational. Um, our youngest person is perhaps three and the oldest is my mom, who's 93. And um, socially and culturally we play and play soccer and play music and sing and dance and have qigong classes and yoga classes that various members will offer to the rest of us. Study groups, learning about different things, reading books. Um, in terms of governance, we govern ourselves. We meet, we have consensus as our decision-making mm -hmm. method. We have multiple mm -hmm. committees and together we're just creating our village. Um, I love living there. I feel blessed to live at Earth Haven. So. That's probably the most, most state, you know, the best statement of all is that people want to be there. People are building, a, I mean, you said it, creating a life together. Yes, yes. On more fronts than we do in our isolated ways of doing things. So, what did enough, oh, what's at, what's at the forward edge, the trends that are happening in Eco Village? I wanted to find out. Fewer people are buying rural property and creating eco-villages from scratch. Mm -hmm. More people mm -hmm. interested in eco-villages are renovating existing buildings or renovating existing buildings in urban areas because where do we need to really emphasize local economy, local food, local energy sources? It's where the population is. So Cleveland Eco-Village is the city of Cleveland redevelopment agencies, nonprofits, environmental organizations, and green builders together redeveloping one of the Cleveland neighborhoods to be oh. its own small, very sustainable green neighborhood. Yeah. Columbia Eco Village is uh, a co-housing community in the heart of downtown Portland, Oregon, with a half-acre CSA farm and permaculture teaching site. So we have an enormous amount of green permaculture-based uh, influence right in the heart of Portland. Another trend is big time housing developers building a housing development and saying, oh, let's see, let's face the houses to the south, put on a few greenhouses, and we'll call it something or other eco village. And it's marketing. So when I meet folks doing that, I think, well, I'm glad you're being more green than you would have been, but would you like to know what eco villages are? Mm -hmm. Would you like to understand mm -hmm. this worldwide movement? And um, Another trend I'd say is transition towns, which are not eco-villages, but are people in towns and islands and neighborhoods and cities and peninsulas and regions gearing up for local food self-reliance, local currencies, local economies, yes. and local energy sources, not because they've been influenced by eco-villages, but because they're influenced by what they see going on now. They're doing what we in eco-villages want people to do out in the wider world. So the two of us, transition towns and eco-villages, are doing what we would hope people would do. To have a smaller energy footprint, more local self-reliance. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, in, in where we are. I mean, because we can't all go out into, in, into virgin territory and create from the ground up. I really... Yes, yes we where do, we are. We have to retrofit where we are. Exactly. Adapt where we are. Yes. Um, tell us about your newsletter. It's called Eco Villages. The website is www.ecovillagenews.org. It's absolutely free and uh, it comes out every two months. I have from six to nine stories written by people from eco villages all over the world. I love this newsletter. It's news about what people are doing, it's designed to inspire viewers, readers, browsers to say, ah, oh, I can learn from this, I can, I can visit these folks, I could do this on my own home site, maybe I could go start one, join one. It's also designed to help the North American eco-village movement get a little bit more vigorous because we're being left in the dust by eco-villages <laughs> in South America and Europe. <laughs> Time for us to... Uh... To think that way, I think it's it's another way of thinking. When I when I think of something like um, the end of suburbia mm -hmm. or the long emergency from Jim Kunstler, and he who says who considers the suburbs to be, you know, a dead end, and I'm thinking we can't have it be a dead end. It's where a lot of America lives. How can somebody creative and imaginative change those into living neighborhood villages? 
Well, that's what that's the Transition Towns movement is helping people mm -hmm. think about in a creative, hopeful, visionary way. So I highly recommend that folks learn about eco-villages, learn about transition towns, and feel some hope and encouragement is what we can all use some of. Well, you've got we, you're, you personally and the, the eco-village that you live in and broader, bringing to our awareness all of the, it strikes me as sort of like uh, diversity, the diversity of human settlements. Yes. They can live more lightly, and we can take inspiration from, from all of them, including, you know, where we are sitting, right here in this co-housing. this lovely place. In the middle of the metropolis. Yes. Um, thank you for that work. You have one last bit of advice. If somebody thinks they're intrigued about eco-villages, where can they, just, just, just a quick sit, where can they start to do their research? Well, online, I'd say. Uh, I highly recommend my newsletter. Yes. I hope people like it because then they might subscribe and that will help me. The more people who subscribe, the sooner I can say, okay, Mr. and Mrs. Advertiser, this is how many people are subscribing. Um, also, the Global Eco Village Network website, which is Gaia.org, or maybe it's ecovillage.org. I'm not sure, but if one Googles one, we'll find it. We'll check it out and have yeah. it the right thing on a yeah. okay. moment. Thank you so much You're for your welcome. conversation and for your work to, to bring this to all of us. And I'm, I, especially because you're living it and you know it from the heart. Yeah, I'm blessed to live in an eco-village. May many more people be similarly blessed yeah. in the years to come. May they. You're watching Peak Moment. My guest is Diana Lee Christian. I'm Jenea Donaldson. Join us next time.